All protocols, good afternoon, sorry. All protocols haven't been done on Monday, but I, was, but I would still like to, to say welcome to the, to the Honorable Attorney General from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thanks for staying and listening to us. Thanks to the, the judges. Thanks to all of you. Good morning. Good afternoon, sorry. Right, our team, Barbados, is made up of Richie Bonnet, Faye Seely, Nicola Callender, Lisa Graves, Rodney Payne, Finidi Williams, Cindy Parakil, June Paris, Joanne Clark, and I am Clifford Bostick. Now we're going to Right, sorry, but where is this thing so far? Okay, so this afternoon I'm gonna speak about consumer protection and competition, data protection, cybersecurity, trade, competition law, information communication technologies, finance, and national standards. For consumer protection, uh, we do have the Fair Trading Commission that was established in about two decades ago, as well as the Telecommunications Act, which was also um, established in about two decades ago. And the Fair Trading Commission basically manages uh, fair competition as well as consumer protection for all services in Barbados for water, electricity, gas, ICTs, and telecommunications. And it is worthy to note that this came about because Barbados at that time, two decades ago, more than two decades ago, sorry, was part of the, is, was a member, became a member of the World Trade Organization and the formation of consumer, consumerism and protection and competition protection was based on trade, trade and Barbados punching above its weight to make sure that we were part of the World Trade Organization. The current status is that the Consumer Protection Act as well as the Fair Competition Act are really outdated. They're more than two decades old. The gaps and challenges represented here are one of quality assurance and quality control. In Barbados, we look forward to the, the days when the electricity company asked for a, a price hike and the fair trading uh, organization invites the public, it invites um, businesses to actually object and to state their objections and be part of the determination of whether or not the price increase is merited and how it will be implemented, if at all. Also, some of the gaps and challenges represented are the, the, for products and services, and as I speak about products and services in consumerism in Barbados, the, the product is water, for example, electricity, the services are customer services from those organizations, as, and whether or not the consumer has any say in what takes place. And you will notice that in most cases, the, the consumer gets protection when there is fair competition taking place in the country. Also, some consumers do believe that they're not having the knowledge of how the service works or how the product works, what are their rights and privileges, how can they defend or object to increases or lack of better services for most of, of these consumer products. I'm talking about water, electricity, gas, and ICTs and telecommunications, and whether there is collusion, price fixing, and predatory pricing. And you will notice if you live in Barbados or you're in CARICOM and you take a good look at Barbados that water and electricity are still basically in a mon monopolistic position as well as gas, but ICTs and telecommunications is very vibrant when it comes to competition. You will notice that there were at one point in time, about a decade ago, over seven to eight 
internet service providers on the island. And you will notice that today, Barbados has launched local number portability to make the market much more competitive. And if you listen to the radio and the TV and the, your WhatsApp and Instagram and so on, you will see that the, the competition has risen to the next level. You'll see both Flow and Digicel advertising more products and services. The recommendations for consumer protection and competition is simple, very simple. The consumer needs to have some sort of protection um, against predatory pricing and lack of, of, qual of better quality of service from, from these organizations. And the government plays a huge role in this. Um, Barbados uh, in 2019, um, they the first order of mobile services in the Caribbean. And as a result of that, there was lots of recommendations that were fulfilled by the operators. But COVID in 2020 and 2021 also increased the demand for services in the in not only in consumer for, for consumer services from ICTs and telecommunications, but also from from the electric company where of course most people were at home, they burn a lot more energy. Businesses were not necessarily closed down, but they were also uh, operating remotely. And we saw the, the demand for energy and the demand for, for services from ICTs and communication increase, therefore making um, consumers a lot more unhappy because they were unable to, to do learning on, online easily without interruptions. And so on. So the recommendation is to have um, more audits done with the understanding that the Fair Trading Commission and the Ministry of in the Industry, Innovation, Science and Technology will work with them to create standards and quality of service standards, not only that represent what the consumer wants, but also what the providers are providing you with in the market. Data protection. We have, we have launched or put in place our data protection act um, um, back, I think it is, was in 2019, I speak subject to correction. But that act has, has, as a result of the act, we have implemented uh, data commissioner, the data protection commissioner, sorry, the commission is to be established uh, it forms an integral part of what we want within our, our jurisdiction, not only in Barbados, but we want to extend it across the Caribbean because there's still that, that zest by CARICOM and Barbados as a partner in CARICOM to have a single ICT space where transact intergovernmental transactions as well as citizens within the various countries could actually do business with the various governments very easily from at home or from abroad. And the challenges that we're faced with, with data protection are very simple. Um, one, the commissioner is a one lady show on her own. We have not been able to establish the human resources as, as well as the plans in place to make sure that they have the requisite skills, that there's sensitization right across Barbados, so that the regulations can be implemented and that everyone within the country can follow those regulations so that you truly have data protection. And if you think about businesses with all the data they have on citizens and businesses, as well as the service providers who see that data transit or pass their networks from time to time, whether it's stored, whether it's free of, of bad or or, or intrusive codes that can cause problems with cybersecurity uh, still is a problem that we have to solve. And of course, there is the lack of process and procedures for cross-border transfer flows. In other words, when a customer or a citizen overseas uh, logs into a system, a platform or portal in Barbados and um, implements or puts in information that's critical to them or also gathers information from the portal that's critical to Barbados, whether or not that data is 
secured and free of the hackers as you and I know. The recommendations is of course, first of all, making sure that the data commissioner has the requisite personnel to help her in her daily, daily job of making sure that the registration procedure is, is right, the implementation of education and sensitization campaigns is done in a, a persistent manner so that the general public is aware. And we don't learn from a single presentation or a single set of presentations. We learn when, when our normal etiquette changes, when you know exactly what you need to do. And one of the examples that I refer to quite often is crossing the road of a child. We learn when you get to the crossroad, you look to the right, you look to the left, you look to the right again, to the left again, and as you're looking to the right and crossing, you're peeping at the left to make sure you don't get run over. So when we have that kind of, when we have developed that kind of skill set in us so that whatever we're doing, we're checking on, on security, whether we have, and we are leaving an open book for anyone to hack into our laptop or tablet or phone and then get into a network and cause havoc. We, when we reach that stage, when we, then we truly know that we're in tune with cybersecurity. It doesn't mean it won't happen, but the chances of it happening is lower, the risk is lower. And remember that human beings are the softest spot for these kinds of, of, um, of things to happen. And of course, once we develop the sensitization and the and we have the registration process in place and, and the procedures of to deal with cross, cross border data transfers and flows, then we, are, we know that we're on the go to get things done properly. Cybersecurity. Cybersecurity permeates all facets of our lives. We notice that the moment we move from paper to electronic, that anyone who has access to a network whether it's via directly via the internet or through a fixed wireless connection to the internet or whether it's via satellite or some other means. I, I, I have a feeling that the, 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 next, the next revolution, the fifth or the sixth rev, uh, resolu revolution will be when we start to transfer information by mind and thought. When they could not necessarily look at Rodney, but send a signal to Rodney to say, never send Barbados last to present anything. <laughs> <laughs> so the status of, of our cybersecurity is that we don't have legislation. Um, I believe we'll, we'll be having a bill quite soon. We've been thinking about this for a long time and writing about it, but we don't have um, that legislation or bill in place at the moment. We do have and as the current status, we do have a, a, a strategy which is before the cabinet of Barbados to be decided on. It's a, it's a stra strategic framework. It is not a very glossy, huge document that I've seen come out of Jamaica and I think out of Trinidad. But our plan is to, to have a framework approved and then go forward towards a, a, a work plan which shows over a five year, possibly a 10 year period possibly a 15 year period, those projects that we will implement going down towards the road of becoming more risk averse and also more competent to change. We do not believe that cybersecurity will, is, is a standing goal post. We believe that it shifts from the left to the right and it gets wider and wider. So the, the, the guys involved in cyber and in, in hacking will get you at some point in time, but we have to move. Otherwise, they will keep us down, they will stop us from progressing. We have to implement, sorry, we don't have education and sensitization programs in place that are consistent. We have done online training. We have done an online training for children at primary school and secondary schools. We have had several uh, online training at conferences like this for our nationals and persons in ICTs, as well as other sectors like the legal sector. We've had it for judges and lawyers. We've had it for, uh, for members of the, 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 the attorney general's office, 
on several occasions. We've had it for persons working in the, the Electoral and Boundaries Commission, uh, several times sponsored by the OAS, um, but we have not developed the, 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 the regulation and legislation yet. Okay, so so most of the gaps are common. Um, there's there's no po policy in place yet. It's still before the cabinet for agreement, um, and the staff. We have to make sure that all staff within all sectors of business in in Barbados, in other words, all the ministries, departments, and agencies in Barbados must become um, cybersecurity and have their data protect data privacy skills embedded so that it becomes part of their routine behavior. Um, and, and of course, there's, there's no common um, published uh, policies and procedures as well that would come after we've gotten approval from, from the government of Barbados to proceed. The recommendations really is to upscale the cybersecurity talents and skills of the public service as well as assist the private sector, because we noticed in Barbados that the, the private sector follows government. So when government fails to deliver, they, they fail to follow. When government uh, succeeds in delivering, they follow. So we have to take the leadership and you will notice that we've had several cyber attacks in the country and our aim is to, is to close that gap. We have, it's not listed there, but we have done about 75% of the work required to establish a CSERT, the Cybersecurity Incident Response Team in Barbados. We have the primary equipment in place. It's been tested, it's, it works. We've had two sets of training, thanks to the, the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union, and you see what the area, area of officer for Barbados is here, for the Caribbean, sorry, is here with us as well. And the next step is to, is to create the secondary site, which will be the same as the primary site, but in a different place. So that should we have any issues, we, we, we have a backup. And thirdly is to have um, business continuity by having a tertiary site. And again, we won't tell you where that will be, but it will be in a place where, where cloud technology exists, but where we do take care of sovereignty as well. And then um, our legislation and regulations is part of those low hanging fruits that we have to take. We have to take care of. So this is cert been established and the regulation and legislation be set up to make sure that we can handle cybersecurity within, within all the ministries in Barbados. Finance, um, one of the World Trade Organizations um, mandates are one of the tenets of the World Trade Organization, which I said to you, Barbados had established a connection with back two decades ago, was fi financial legislative um, legislation, because finance is one of the areas that is lucrative for trade. Um, it is products and services and is finance. It is also tourism. One of the services is tourism, products and service could be sugar, bananas, um, veg vegetables, um, black belly sheep, um, all the various types of products that you can trade on the market, but also the financial services. And if you, if, and Barbados wanted to make sure that we benefited from financial services as well. Um, there is legislation out there, but there is the, the gap basically lies in, in cybersecurity um, you know that we have in the Barbados government um, a payment platform, it's called Easy Pay Plus, and you can find all this, almost 100% of the services offered by government on that pla platform. In other words, you can log into the platform, choose a ministry, and then choose the type of service you want to pay for, the product you want to pay for, and you go from there. But we need additional security, cyber security for it, there needs to be staffing. Uh, with, with the right skill sets, just not within the Ministry of Industry, Innovation, Science and, and Technology, but within all the ministries, department, departments and agencies, because 
that payment platform connects to those ministries for services. For example, you can log into EasyPay and, and, and get a police certificate of character. Most people in Barbados need that in order to get employment. But having paid for the service, then the system connects you to the police the data cores where they are the process that they have and so on and that needs to be protected and like my friends in trinidad and tobago that was the department that had lots of paper lots of procedures lots of sensitive and very critical procedures as well so not everyone could have access to it so legislation needed to be changed to facilitate the police certificate of character being digitized or digitalized in other words you the police now can tell where the folks where's the demand for police certificate of characters in the country who are the citizens who want these these police police certificate of character all right the, is it the high end that is those in the middle class and higher and higher revenue earning classes or is it in the lower classes they have all that information now so guess what? They can plan to be more efficient. They can now take their resources and allocate their resources to the streets of Barbados. And this not to be funny, but this morning in trying to get here early, I went past 80 kilometers an hour. And the police officer said, sir, you are at 101. And you can't get to Aqua Beach in 10 minutes. <laughs> so to get back to the point, it is they now know what are the things they need to control. So instead of having officers within the, the confines of a library with lots of files and so on, they put them on the streets to make sure that Senor Bostick does not drive too fast on highway, the ABC highway. Now, um, also, there, there are in, there's inadequate lace, um, regulation by the regulators and the regulators for, for finance are the central bank and they have um, their attorneys who work with them, the Financial Services Commission and there was a person here from that organization not too long ago, I think on Monday and they regulate the, the, what they refer to as the non-financial agencies. Now imagine this. I, I, I'm not a lawyer, so I get lost sometimes. They are man they're focusing on the credit unions in Barbados, who, by the way, have quite a bit of revenue. They own quite a bit of assets, cash, a lot of cash. They are the, the persons who you go and put your money with, and you, you borrow basically, but you have savings, and you have other types of investment tools, but they have a significant amount of cash and assets and the, 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 the FSC, the Financial Services Commission's concern with the central bank is that if there's a crash with the, with the credit unions, it could bring down the economy. And so they have implemented some changes and procedures, which, which means that the, the directors and those credit unions are now responsible if something goes wrong. My apologies. If something goes wrong, they, they are liable and they can be prosecuted and locked up uh, for causing the economy to crash um, <laughs> by not managing those funds properly. These rules and regulations are not fami very familiar by the credit unions and they have implemented some things that will change that, such as doing courses online and once you've done the courses online every year they know that you are aware of what's happening and that's one of the the, the gaps that were filled the public account committee is unable to convene due to the current status and of course updated legislation which appears not to be a priority but this is that accounting organization or committee which makes sure that the accounting for the country is done properly that there is accountability and responsibility for the public funds. Um, so coming out to a workshop like this, someone will be checking to see if we followed the protocols, if we followed the procedures. And if you haven't, then there is some penalty to be paid. It's as simple as that. Um, 
the, and so the recommendations are basically to make sure that the current legislation is reviewed to determine exactly what we need to embrace in a digital economy. We will look towards the region and the international markets to see what they have in place, but we will not take, <laughs> and there's the, I'm uh, speaking there already to our lawyers in the crowd, in the workshop, the lawyers in Barbados, and I believe in St. Vincent and, Grenad and the Grenadines and Antigua and Trinidad and Tobago will not take, let's say, for example, the HIPCAR legislation, which was done um, in conjunction with the ITU, the CTU, and, and I see Mrs. Madden here as well. A long time ago, more than probably close to two, two decades ago, but the comments that came back from the attorney general's office was that we can't take we can't take the hip car and activate it in our communities because the lawyers need to see what is it that you were trying to achieve as opposed to the model text as opposed to the prescription as opposed to the legislation so when we look at legislation from international and regional organizations we have to be extremely careful that we understand clearly and this is a problem because the technocrats really technically minded persons do not understand legal drafting as a matter of fact legal drafting is not liked by lots of lawyers there are very few who like it and so it, it, it is a big problem we have to find a solution for it and one of the solutions is that all the groups get together to formulate that legislation or regulation that we need for harmonization, which is critical for us to carry on. So one of the recommendations is to, is to have a hit car too done for the region with the same support from ITU, from Cleveland in the back, and from Mrs. Madden in the front, as well as the OAS and any other, the EU and those folks, so that we can have um, better legislation in place that suits us. And we need to document our roadmaps. Um, the, the CTU, the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, has, has a roadmap which covers, covers off um, legislation and regulations as well. It's an in-depth document and we need to take, we, we have it already and we need to put some focus on it. There must be clear policies so that the, all the ministries, departments and agencies understand exactly what we need to do. So we need to have um, meetings with them. We've started this in Barbados with the technical guys, because those are the, the technical guys are the most difficult ones to get legislation passed because they, they only see the technology piece of it. The legislation is dealt with by the lawyers. And we need to communicate our intent to all the stakeholders and of course, design that implementation, that implementation plan, which should be something that, that excites our folks, all of us, so that we see there's a clear path towards success and getting ourselves out of some of these holes that we're in. ICTs and telecommunications. This forms the, the bedrock basically to most things that we have to do. You, there, is, there was a time when communication was just by voice. So when you spoke somewhere in London or Africa or Australia or the United States, someone in Barbados would hear you if they had a phone to their ear. Today, it is invisible, it's online, it goes from, from, one, from one device to another device and we just basically activate these devices and we look and we can see and hear and so on and so forth. It forms a bedrock to how information is shared, how products and services can be distributed, how trade can be implemented. And I, I must tell you that the status of our regulation and legislation is dated as well. Our Telecoms Act is 22 years old. The Fair Trading Commission's acts for, for consumer protection as well as for competition uh, regulation in Barbados is dated over 22 years old as well. Um, and we talk about best practice. We, we understand good practice because sometimes the best practice, when you look at what's out there internationally, it's good practice for them. It won't be best practice for us until we 
tweak it to suit our environment, to suit our economies, our culture, and the way we do business in Barbados. And of course, it's prohibitive. And one of the reasons it's prohibitive, that's in terms of the cost, is because most legal personnel don't like drafting. Drafting is one of those boring things to do, I'm told. I heard you, I heard you, right. But somehow they're able to translate that to high cost because if you want me to do it, you gotta pay me to do this thing. The gaps, the cyber gaps basically are simple. The, the, the escalation or the, the process of technology advancing so swiftly is results in the legislation being far behind. And if you're smart and you decide to implement the legislation before the technology gets there, when the technology gets there, then you have to change, you have to tweak or amend the legislation simply because the technology sometimes brings things into place that, that you never thought about before. I'll give you a typical example. Barbados decided on implemented a, a, a Barbados identity system and we call it the National Identity Project. Uh, we go slowly. And before that project was started or got into full gear, uh, we went to implement legislation called Barbados Identity Management Legislation or Barbados Identity Management Act of 2019. The project continued and today folks have a digital ID card that you can go anywhere and you can show and a, and a police officer can scan it and, and know that it is you, that you can go renew your driver's license because the system knows that it is you. You can use it in the banks, the system knows that it is you. But coming next will be, <clears throat> will be a remote app that you can have on your devices that will also identify you. And when that te technology is adopted by us, guess what? We have to amend the regulations related to the Barbados Identification Management App. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, so the gaps, as you could see, are representative of what we lack in terms of legislation and regulations and because of the cost of it and because we do not this is something that we haven't done before and we need the the big countries like the united states of america the european union the australians uh, in our local environment we need trinidad and tobago and jamaica to help us in the oecs and barbados and all the rest of the leeward islands and but we have to make sure that when we design the strategies and the roadmaps that we implement them with sense and know that you cannot walk fast and deliver at pace but you need to be focused and have a strategy that you can follow and secondly we need to make sure that we engage the international agencies for good practice and good practices making sure you adopt it to your economies to your your, your societal traits that you have, as well as to your to our needs uh, as well. And others, now I knew this would happen and I knew I would get um, someone giving me a red light, but the others relate, relate to Barbados national standards. We have national standards in our country that, and we have ISO, I think it's 9001 certification. What they're looking to do now is to get all the ministries, departments, and agencies involved. That is the people like myself and like most of us you see in the back, as well as all those supporting um, staff officers who work within the various ministries. And I think they're having a training session in March. And at the end of the training session, if we're all successful, we will be standardized and given a certificate, which you have to renew on a yearly basis. And at this time, I want to thank you before you chase me off the floor. Go Team Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Nivia, we're going to start with you. 
I just want to be really quick because I, I sense the room getting a little quieter the closer to one o'clock we, we get. And I realize that um, Vashti is spoiling them because you know, she, she doesn't eat the lunches, but she makes sure that everybody else is getting you know, three course meals. Yeah. So very quickly, I liked your presentation, how you split up the different um, sections. I noticed that you gave us a lot of information on the internal data protection, cybersecurity, and so on, but I'm coming back to the same thing again. What about external? How are you trying to modernize or ease your business from the custom side, from the access into Barbados? I liked your plans for the cross-border flows and so on, but just from that side of coming in, seeing that apparently my role today is to talk about trade facilitation. So that was just a short question I had for you. Right, thank you very much for a short question. Um, what I can tell you is that the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs plays a great role in this, and I can see Kay, Kay Seeley may want to take a stab at that. Go ahead, Kay. Thank you very much, and I can let you know that for Barbados, we are actively seeking to implement all of the provisions under the WTO Trade Facilitation Agreement. In addition, we have implemented Asikuda World by Customs, and we hope within the next year or two, we can introduce an electronic single window. And as it relates to the port, I can let you know that there is a port community systems project in place, and we're looking to enhance efficiency and facilitate real-time real transfer of data and information of, between the public and private sector. So those are some of the initiatives that we're looking as it relates to trade facilitation. And also, as it relates to the HS, the harmonized system, we're keeping current. So Customs is currently piloting an activity where we're looking to implement the HS 2022 later this year. Thank you. Yes, and I would just like to add that here in her capacity also meets with most of the ministry's officials whenever the, these trade agreements come up for a review, wanting, uh, requiring updates from the various ministries. And, and that's one of the things that keeps us remembering and understanding that it's about trade as well. Yeah, just um, a couple of uh, positive points, I think, on the presentation. Thank you very much, by the way. Was that emphasis on public-private sector collaboration on the legal framework? I thought that was a really well-made point. I totally support that. Um, I think the recognition that financial innovation is coming from the private sector, absolutely, 100%. They're way out in front of governments, and I think that's just acknowledging that is really, really important. We need to catch up from the public sector side. And then I particularly like the, the, the point on documenting a roadmap with timelines. That's music to the ears of any industry. We need concrete action, concrete time frame. Uh, we don't want lots of reviews. We just want action, uh, especially in this digitalization space. So I think that's really, really well made point. I like that. Um, my only comment was around data. You made a lot of points around the sort of data. And you know, data flow is obviously a very complex area for, for lots of governments. It is please be mindful of B2B data versus B2C data. Uh, you know, there are common threads across the two, but 80 to 90% of all data flow is B2B data but 90% of all the issues are in the B2B space. Is that privacy issue, those sorts of issues, the Facebook issues, it's often called. Mm -hmm. you know, and we've got to guide the political uh, classes through that, you know, navigate them through that argument. Otherwise, all that happens is we all get bogged down in B2C. Business get intensely frustrated because we're not making any progress on the B2B, which is a much more important piece from, from a trade you know, business point of view. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just trying to be mindful of those two things. And, where you can separate the two, make progress on B2B, don't get stuck in the B2C, and we all have to wait for that before we can make progress with business. Yes, thank you, thank you very much, I appreciate that, because you're absolutely correct. We were focused a lot on um, citizens to big businesses, whether it's government or private sector, as well as small businesses to government as well, and large businesses to government, but the focus on business to business is not there right now, so thanks very much for that. Thank you very much and great presentation and really sorry we had to cut you off, but you stand between us and lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so um, like with other presentations and like Chris, I really like the, uh, the roadmap, the clear policies, the communication to stakeholders and the implementation plan. And that fits in with a comment that I made for the first um, 
first uh, group, mm -hmm. which is when you're looking to reform your legal and regulatory framework, when you're looking to go towards the digital transformation, you really need to think about the sustainable financing for the upskilling and the scaling of efforts. Um, you talk about the working group. We all know that costs money. Um, so I think when I mentioned, do you have a pitch? I think your roadmap, your clear policies, the communication and the implementation plan, those are very, very important so that you can really uh, pitch it to potential donor agencies. So it's more of a comment than a question. Thank you very much. And it's interesting that you, you, your comment is like that on the donor groups. We're currently looking in MIST to engage a company who we saw in Suriname uh, a few days ago who has offered to assist governments in CARICOM with getting projects done that they funded that they could not get the funding locally. And uh, we are exploring that as well. Um, you may not be aware of this, but we, we are signed up in the metaverse and we have to do a lot of work to, to help our stakeholders understand what it means and how we can fund that so that Barbados, again, we punch in way above its weight like we did back in 20, 20 years ago at the WTO. Thank you, Clifford. You represented, you and your team represented Barbados well. Um, I unfortunately have some inside knowledge. <laughs> and unfortunately, I know that even with the support of the OAS, the cybersecurity strategy has been very long in the making, I think probably more than five years, even with the support of the OAS. And I'm wondering what can we do? And then now we said this with cabinet, I believe, which will then uh, give formal approval. So that's just the development. We still have to move to implementation. So how, what can we do to accelerate these sort of timelines? Even if sir, it took a while as well with ITU support, what can we do to shorten that? Because we can't in reality take five years, even on the strategy development side, let alone implementation. So how can we address those shortcomings? I, very good question, um, Rodney. The, <clears throat> from, from where I stand and sit, the one thing that we didn't have was financial support. Um, for example, we formed a, a group called the Cybersecurity Working Group, which is made up of professionals, both in private sector, as well as in the public sector, as, as well as some persons who are overseas, actually. And they sit to, to discuss with us cybersecurity and the action we need to take. What we didn't have was budget. For example, in our ministry, in the Ministry of Industry, Innovation, Science and Technology, we did not have a director for cybersecurity. We still don't have one and a team to work in cybersecurity. So uh, finance is support in terms of government finances is what's missing. Um, secondly, we do spend a long, we did spend a long time um, working on the strategy as well as the, the, the work plan or the, the plans that we would roll out across 10, 5, 10, 15 years. Again, we had support from all the ministries and government, the private sector, the cybersecurity working group. But what, what we saw that was missing was support. So if you were, let's say, in a bill, in a meeting like this, face to face, it, and the last one was in 2018 or 2019, that we met with, we met in, the, in a military compound basically to have that meeting. What we lack was again support just to feed the folks and give them some refreshment. We, we, we were beggars. You, I, you couldn't imagine what we went through to get that done. So I think financing seemed to be the, the, the last thing that we need to get done. And I believe that support from the European Union or from bankers in the US or wherever they are to give us some funding, not give, but loan us some funding, provided that, that we. we reach the targets of, provide, of producing the, the plans as well as implementing the low hanging fruit would help us. I would also just finally say that um, the case of, I mean, my experience with Barbados has convinced me that really we ought to, at a regional level in particular around cybersecurity, we need really to lean more heavily on 
institutions like CARICOM impacts and give it the resources, in particular, like our own certs and about mm -hmm. the response to cyber threats and so on, because as you know, it's very costly once a breach has happened to actually bring the resources on board. And mm -hmm. it's a global shortage in cybersecurity skills. So I think that is one particular area where I think we can benefit from greater regional harmonization. But on that, I want to thank you because we are, I believe we're just past, in fact, our lunch time. And I would want, again, a round of applause for Barbados. <laughs>